everybody, my name is Leon and I am excited to share a word that's been burning on my heart with you guys. Uh, wherever you are, I just pray that this speaks to you and it blesses you um, in the way that it blessed me as well. In Sydney right now, where I am, it is currently winter. Uh, the, the temperatures are plummeting, it's super cold, and I struggle with the winter. But then I think about the beautiful people right around the world in crazier climates, and I realize that I'm not in such a bad situation. There are people that choose, um, in and of their own will, to climb Mount Everest. It's insane. Mount Everest gets super cold, and I, th I think it can, in January, temperatures can drop as low as minus 60 degrees. I looked it up in Fahrenheit, that's minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. It's insane. And um, there are scientists and climbers who have coined the special name for the, the uh, uh, part of Mount Everest where you climb above the 8,000 kilometer height. Once you get above that point, it's called the death zone. Why? Because every second you're inside this death zone above 8,000 kilometers, you are dying. Every second that you're above this altitude, your body is slowly shutting down. You start to hallucinate, there's uh, restricted oxygen, it's just way too cold. And if you stop moving, your body will slowly shut down. So much so that most deaths are caused because people are waiting in line to hit that summit and celebrate at the top. People are freezing on their way up just because of the lack of movement. Now, I was thinking about this and I felt God speaking to me a little bit about this season that we've found ourselves in. And I feel God's using this to prophesy to us about this season. God is calling us to action. He is calling us to move. And He wants people to be set free from frostbitten faith. We see in James chapter 2, uh, the writer of James talking about this frostbitten faith and he calls it dead faith. It's an interesting term. It means that there is such thing as dead faith and living faith. For us here in Australia, we believe that God has prophesied over this season for it to be a season of harvest. God has got so much in store for us this season and we've been calling it out. We've been believing for it. But when this last season came about, uh, I think a lot of us found ourselves questioning that idea. Is it really the season of harvest? Well, I'm here to say this to you right around the world that this is a season of harvest and God wants to free us from a frost bitten dead faith. And this message is to call you to action, to wake you up again to all that God is calling us to be and go after in this season. My question to you is what has fallen asleep within you that God wants to awaken to action again? James chapter 2 verse 14 says this, um, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Another word for this word is action. What good is it if you have faith but no action? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works or action is dead. We go down to verse 20 and it says, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from action is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by action when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, faith was active along with his action and faith was completed by his action. And the scripture continues on. Um, I'll read from verse 26. It says, for as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also is faith apart from action dead. So your, your faith can either be dead or alive. Faith without action is dead. Many of us in this last season during COVID-19, um, a lot of us were quick to go get ourselves checked. If you notice any symptoms of COVID-19 or any flu-like symptoms, I'm sure you were quick to go get yourself checked and uh, make sure that you're all good. And I just kind of want to challenge us to make sure that we're checking ourselves for symptoms of dead faith in this season. God is calling us to awaken out of a place of dead faith into an actioned faith, a living faith. What good is dead faith to him. Faith that is dead is a frost-bitten, fruitless 
faith that has halted in its tracks. What am I talking about? Maybe you've got yourself in a place where you believe God has called you to be a healthy person, but you don't manage a healthy lifestyle. Maybe you believe to see the city you're in saved, but you don't tell others about Jesus. Maybe you believe in miracles, but you've stopped contending for them. Maybe you believe God wants to prosper your business, but you don't submit your plans to Him. Maybe you believe church is a healthy place to be planted, but you're no longer committed. Jesus was super practical. For us, we pray things like, Lord, bless this city. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But He's calling us to bless this city. Jesus says things like, love your enemy. Do good to those who hate you. If someone steals your cloak, give them another. Love your neighbor. Look after the widow and orphan. Praying is important, not because it changes the heart of God, but because it opens up our eyes to see His will for the earth that He's calling us to accomplish in this season. So it's crucial that we check our faith status. Have you let your faith die in this season? If you have, I'm calling you to wake it up right now in Jesus' name. Come back into the place that He's called you to be and action your Faith. Leave behind your frostbitten faith for a faith, uh, sorry, a faith that will flourish. Leave behind your dead faith and enter into a season of living and actioned faith. Now the question is, what is it going to take to action our faith? I think Jesus outlines it really beautifully in the story of the Good Samaritan. So we're going to read through Luke chapter 10, verse 30, the story of the Good Samaritan. And I just want to share three points that I believe will equip us to have actioned faith in this season. Let's read through it. There once was a Jewish man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho when bandits robbed him along the way. They beat him severely and stripped him naked and left him half dead. Soon, a Jewish priest walking down the same road came upon the wounded man. Seeing him from a distance, the priest crossed to the other side of the road and walked right past him, not turning to help him one bit. Later, a religious man, a Levite, came walking down the same road and likewise crossed to the other side to pass by the wounded man without stopping to help him. Finally, another man, a Samaritan, came upon the bleeding man and was moved with tender compassion for him. He stooped down and gave him first aid, pouring olive oil on his wounds, disinfecting them with wine and bandaging them to stop the bleeding. Lifting him up, he placed him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn. Then he took him from his donkey and carried him to a room for the night. The next morning, he took his own money from his wallet and gave it to the innkeeper with these words, take care of him until I come back from my journey. If it costs more than this, I will repay you when I return. What can we learn from the Good Samaritan in this story? Number one, God is calling us to get real. Church is calling us to open up our eyes to the season that we're in, to what is going on around us. Open up our eyes. People say ignorance is bliss, but ignorance is really just delayed consequence. You're going to have to deal with the issue eventually. Vanessa and I recently moved into a beautiful new home. And what you find if you've, if you've ever moved house before is um, you'll find that it actually takes a little bit of time to unpack and settle into a new place. What can easily happen is uh, you end up developing this spare room syndrome. Now, let me explain the spare room syndrome. You may have one of these in your own home. The spare room syndrome is where you have a room where you just chuck all your junk that you're going to deal with later. Now, Vanessa and I had, for the first couple of weeks when we moved, we had this room with just all these boxes and plenty of things that just needed to be dealt with, but we left it there so we could close the door and just leave it. And, you know, we're thinking ignorance is bliss. But here's the problem. If we don't deal with that room, we miss out on getting to use that room. In the same way, sometimes we just choose to ignore what's going on around us and we miss out on what God wants to do through us in that season. Have you become content with where you are at and no longer actioning your faith? Get real. Ignorance will produce frost-bitten faith. The, fra the Pharisee and the Levite looked upon this bruised and beaded man, and they kept their eyes shut. But it was the Samaritan. In verse 33, it talks about another man, a Samaritan, came upon the bleeding man and was moved with tender compassion for him. Be 
moved. Open your eyes, get real. Ignorance versus awareness. Whatever will be, will be, some people say. But the truth is, whatever you let be, will be. Faith does not equal blindness. In fact, faith should give you a whole new level of vision to see, a heavenly perspective. Some people say, you know, faith is blind. It's about trusting God and you just kind of walk, you know, left and right. And you're just trusting Him to lead you through it. Here's, here's, here's what I think about that. I believe faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the evidence of things that we do not see. But It's not painting a picture of blind faith. It's not about not seeing things. It's saying that in our human ability, we cannot see. But with faith, we see from a heavenly perspective. We're not actually blinded. We actually have better vision than the world has. So in the same way, God is waking you up by opening your eyes to see again what He is stirring you to believe for this year in 2020. Get real people. What have you become ignorant to? What have you closed your eyes to? Open them today. Get real. Number two, give what you got. God is calling us to partner with Him. What are you doing about what you want to see happen this year? When we get stingy, we frostbite our faith. But generous faith entices the floodgates of heaven to partnership. We see the good Samaritan. It says in verse 34 that he stooped down. He gave this man first aid, pouring olive oil on his wounds, disinfecting them with wine. Talks about how he bandages him. He lifts him up, places him on his own donkey. He brings him to an inn. And um, he carries him into the room for the night. This man spent his own time and his own resources on the hurting man. He used his own donkey to carry him to safety. He brought his offering. And my question to you is, what can you bring in this season? Abraham brought Isaac. Moses brought his staff. Gideon brought his 300 men. David bought five smooth stones and a sling. The young boy brought five loaves and two fish. What seemingly insignificant offering can you bring in this season? Leave behind your frostbitten faith. God is calling you to action what you have. God can work with people who take responsibility to bring what they have. When we are stingy, we frostbite our faith and we can delay God's hand. But God can work with a heart that is filled with generous and willing faith. What are you doing about what you want to see happen this year? It's a season to recommit your all to Him. Here's an idea. Create a list of what you have available to offer to Him. Your time, your energy, your resources, your money, your mind, your gifts, your business, your employees, your strategies. What does living faith look like in this season? What is an actioned faith? Get practical and think about what you're able to give to Him. So get real. Give what you got. And lastly, I want to inspire and encourage us to go the distance. This is a big one. So often we give up just shy of the fruit, just shy of the harvest. Uh, For me um, and Vanessa, um, we are terrible with our plants at home. Uh, We are cereal plant killers, unfortunately. We love plants. We buy so many plants. And um, there's a certain plant that we love. We love the fiddle leaf tree. It's a beautiful little tree with these beautiful massive leaves. And the sad thing is we bought one and the leaves just kept falling off. It's really sad. If you've ever bought a fiddle leaf plant, you might have gone through this same issue. And so we were about to chuck it out. We were ready to give up on this plant. And just before we chucked it out, we decided to give it to Vanessa's mom. Vanessa, my wife, um, her mom is amazing looking after plants. So we gave her the plant. Lo and behold, it's living, it's thriving now. Uh, Her mom nursed it back to life. And we were just about to give up on that plant, but we gave it to someone that could look after it. And this plant was pretty much resurrected. It's the same way with a lot of, a lot of plants though. Um, you look at chili plants and basil plants and a lot of other veggie plants. Um, it can look like these plants are dying and you can be ready to give up on them. But there's something that we see happen um, in horticulture where these, seed, these plants go to seed form. They start developing seed and they, they burst into new life again. They enter a new season. In the same way, sometimes we can look at what we're in And we can be ready to give up. But God is saying to us, hey, don't give up too early. Go the distance. God is doing something. Keep working with what you got. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Galatians 6 verse 9 says this. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap a harvest. Here's the key. 
if we do not give up. We frostbite our faith when we tap out early. And we see the Good Samaritan, it talks about in verse 35 of Luke 10. The next morning it says he took out his own money from his wallet. He gives it to the innkeeper and he says these words, Take care of him until I come back from my journey. And if it costs more than this, I will repay you when I return. For some of us, we're actually on track toward the harvest that God has set aside for us. But we've eased up on the gas Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you not to stop believing in this season. This is not the time to lift your foot off the pedal. This is not the time to jump on the bench. This is not the time to call half time. It's time to run. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run as if to win. Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since we are so surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight of sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Guys, this thing is a race. It's not just a breezy stroll. It's not even a relay. We are on mission to be all Jesus has called us to be before our time is up on earth. Do not grow weary. Do not give up. Keep running. I want to finish with this. Are you looking for a breakthrough in this season? Are you dreaming? Are you contending for a breakthrough this season? I want to implore you not to give up. Do not give up early. I was asking God, please help me make this um, seem super simple. I just, I just want to explain this in a real simple, uh, childlike way, I guess. Here's a balloon. Right? We all love balloons. And um, I was thinking about how when you blow up a balloon, you're always blowing to try and find the perfect size. Okay. Um, in a similar way, sometimes what we do is... Um, we, we, I guess we deposit a little bit of faith into our season. Sometimes we blow up the balloon and um, we sow in a little bit of faith, but uh, we stop short and we capture our effort and we admire our effort and praise our effort, what we've done in the last season. But our past effort isn't enough for our future breakthrough. We are called to daily get real, but there's still more to go. We are, to we are told to give what we've got. And we are called to go the distance. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is going to blow up in my face. Are you ready to contend for the breakthrough? Friday. There you go. There's the breakthrough. Until we see the breakthrough. What have we learned from Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan? If you wait, if you wait to ditch your frostbitten faith for a faith that flourishes, sorry, if you want to ditch your frostbitten faith for a faith that flourishes, you got to get real, you got to give what you got, and you got to go the distance. If you want to see breakthrough, listen, frostbitten faith is useless. A dead faith, just longing for something but doing nothing about it, it's useless. God is calling us to action in this season. The Pharisee and the Levite, they had the image of God on them. They knew who God was, and yet they didn't action them. It's not enough to know Him, but it's we're called to know Him and make Him known in this season. So if you've fallen into this season, uh, in this season, if you've fallen into a place of having frostbitten faith, I want to challenge you to wake up, action your faith, and be all that God has called you to be in this season. Thanks for listening. God bless you. We'll be praying for you. And um, we just, yeah, we're, we're praying that in this season, God will continue to use you to bear fruit and advance His kingdom in a beautiful way. We love you heaps. See you next time.